Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, Hambledon Hill, uh, which is uh, an old, um, I think it's a Saxon uh, uh, hill fort uh, here in Dorset in England in the United Kingdom. Um, if I look tired and slightly flushed, it's because I am. It's quite a hike to get up to the top of this hill. Um, and unfortunately, when I got here, it's actually quite blowy. And uh, so actually trying to do this at the top of the hill, sort of up there, is next to impossible. So I'm trying to do it in the lee of the hill, and I'm hoping that um, there's no uh, discernible wind noise. So last week's video, or uh, the, the last video that I published, was about why I chose to buy into the uh, Olympus Micro Four Thirds system. To try and balance that a little bit, I want to uh, actually just describe to you, having used the system now for six, maybe seven years, I just want to highlight a few things that actually I find frustrating or maybe even slightly challenging with the Olympus system. And, you know, and let's face it, every single camera system will uh, you know, dependent on the person, will have its, not its weaknesses, that's unfair, but it, it will have things that every single user will wish that the manufacturer of that system did slightly differently. And in fairness to the camera manufacturers, they are trying to design and produce a one-size-fits-all for every type of person, no matter how many hands, fingers, size of hands, <laughs> eyes, you know, you name it, they're trying to design a system that fits as many people as possible. So I'm not being critical of Olympus or any other camera system by uh, highlighting these things. When I bought into the Olympus brand, I was using a Canon 5D and my favorite lens at the time was a 12 to 70 uh, millimeter lens. Lovely lens, lovely camera. In total, that weighed roughly 1.4 kilos, which at the time, being a young man, wasn't a problem. When I bought into the Olympus brand, I purchased, as I said in my last video, an original EM5 and a kit 12 to 50 millimeter lens. The total weight of those two things was, as near as makes no odds, 700 grams. So half the weight of what I was used to carrying around with my uh, uh, most popular Canon uh, setup. But not only half the weight, but with all sorts of functions and features that I spoke about in my last video that were at my disposal that I could use to increase my enjoyment of my photography and add something to my creativity. Now that's, that's great. And the marketing uh, words that are used by Olympus for their camera system is very much about, you know, why would you use a, you know, a, a, a massive DSLR system? Why not use something uh, smaller, uh, lighter, um, you know, more, you're more edit, readily a, able to carry it, etc., etc. And for the purchase that I initially made, I think that that's absolutely true. However, having made the decision to buy into the brand, I've then very gradually um, moved more towards the uh, professional level kit. So I've bought their flagship EM1 camera bodies and I've invested in their pro lenses. The reasons for doing that are that as a landscaper, um, I'm out in all the elements. So I want to have a camera and lens setup that really is capable of withstanding whatever the British weather can throw at it. So going towards a more prospect body and a prospect lens gives me that uh, comfort. Maybe it's a, a mental comfort, but it's definitely a comfort that no matter where I am, no matter what situation I find myself in, this camera system is gonna be able to cope with it and it's gonna be able to withstand the odd shower, the odd snow shower, it turning very hot or very cold or, or whatever. However, if I was to take my current setup, which is an EM1 Mark III with the Pro 12 to 100 millimeter lens, that clocks in at 1.2 kilos. Okay, it's 200 grams less than 
the Canon 5D with the 24 to 70. But it's not as light as the original purchase, which was around about 700 grams. So it's not a problem, but I think it's something, you know, anybody that buys into any brand and does so based on the marketing hype, I think, you know, just carefully research and consider everything that you're being told. I didn't when I bought an EM1 and the Prospect lenses. I just did it with the blind faith that I was making the right decision based on weather sealing. <clears throat> the net result though is that I'm probably carrying around in terms of weight as much in my bag now as I was when I was using Canon and all of a sudden that weight advantage has been completely eliminated. Now I know I'm I'm paying that price for the comfort of uh, weather sealing and pro quality and, and blah, 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 blah. But that initial sell of it's going to be lighter in my bag and, oh, I've got a featherweight bag now, that is no longer true. If you are enjoying this video and would like to support my channel, then please click on the thumbs up icon indicated here. To be notified when I upload new content, which will be every two weeks, then please consider subscribing. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. As well as subscribing, click on the bell icon and select all in order to get these notifications. All updates for new videos appear here on the top right hand side of your YouTube homepage. The next aspect that I want to talk about is filters and the impact of using a filter system that's more designed for a full frame camera on a camera with a smaller lens. And the easiest way for me to talk about it is to actually show you on the back of the camera. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so I'm very aware that that screen is a little bit wonky. Um, Please forgive me and honestly don't really worry about it. It's, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to show you a principle here uh, rather than get it completely right. So um, what I'm using right now is a grey grad. Uh, let me just uh, knock the camera up so you can see it. So there, there's my grad. Uh, you can quite clearly see uh, it's got a very definite line between the grey bit and the clear bit. Um, and I've done that deliberately so that you can actually see um, the differentiation between the, the two areas <coughs> when I put the uh, grad uh, in the camera. So let me pull that screen back down. There we go. We'll leave that there. And let's just slot it into the slots. Right. And let's just pop it down. Right. OK. So you can quite clearly see in fact, if I zoom out a bit more, you can see it even more. You can quite clearly see there on the back of the camera, you can see the line between the gray bit and the clear bit. It's, it's visually, it's easy to see and easily identifiable. Now that's with the lens at 12 millimeters, its widest end. However, watch the difference between the gray bit and the clear bit as I zoom in. So this is 25, 50, 70, and now 100. Hopefully you can see there that now the differentiation between the gray bit and the clear bit is nowhere near as well defined. You know, I'd, I'd almost go to the point that you can't see it anymore. And that's with a hard grad. So imagine that phenomena, that situation, with a really soft graduated filter. It, it means that it, it went, especially when you're zoomed in, you just cannot see where the gray bit and the dark bit uh, of an image starts and ends. Now, I have figured out a way of doing it or, or working around it. I use the histogram. I use the, this little bar graph here to work out which of my bits of my picture are being impacted by the grey and the clear and you, as I move the filter up and down you can quite clearly see the histogram uh, changing as I do that. So I've worked out a way of uh, coping with that situation. Um, now there are um, 
uh, filter systems that have been specifically produced uh, for small sensor cameras. Um, but <laughs> even they are not sort of, you know, completely uh, without their uh, idiosyncrasies. So the Nissi 75 system, that will only, that can only be used with lenses up to a 62 millimeter diameter. Um, the lens that I've got on this camera is actually 72. Uh, most recently, the uh, Lee filter system they've produced, I think it's called a Lee filters 85 system that is again specifically designed uh, for this camera system and it will can be used on lenses up to I think uh, 72 millimeters or it might be slightly less I'm just going to check my notes which I did make uh, yeah 72 millimeters which would be fine I could use that system with this lens uh, and use it quite happily but that's another 400 quid investment having made an investment in lenses, uh, sorry, in uh, filters, I'm not so sure I necessarily <laughs> want to go and spend another 400 quid on a filter system. Like I say, I've found a way around it, but it's a little bit of a fudge, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. Um, uh, and it's, and I've encountered it because I'm using uh, pro lenses with uh, large diameters. Uh, that's meant that I've had to use filter systems that can cope with 72 millimeter diameters. And then by mission of action, I'm ending up having to use a large filter system that's more actually designed for full frame or um, you know, what, what are traditionally regarded as normal uh, crop sensors. So it's a challenge. I found a way around it, but every once in a while, especially when I'm in a situation where I'm having to work very fast, um, I find it frustrating. I would just like to be able to visually see where the grad is, put it down, push the button without having to faff around uh, with uh, the histogram. So that would be uh, challenge number two. So this last item, I decided to move up onto the top of Hamilton Hill, but the uh, wind up there was uh, really, really gusting, uh, making it impossible to record uh, any uh, audio. Um, it's a bit difficult to tell, but yeah, there you go. Let's see the, the video camera I'm recording on is actually moving around. The wind up there was uh, so strong. But dynamic range is the uh, capability of the camera system to uh, cope with the range of brightness in whatever scene uh, it is that I'm pointing my camera at. Um, now the Olympus system, uh, certainly my uh, EM1 Mark III, has a dynamic range of roughly uh, 10 stops of light, which is, which is pretty good to be fair. Um, but if we were to just compare it with the uh, slightly newer Canon R5, uh, then the Canon R5 has near enough 14 and a half uh, stops of light, which, you know, it, it, it doesn't sound like a massive uh, increase in range but it doesn't half uh, make a difference so uh, you know here you can quite clearly see on the back of the camera um, I've already got uh, a hot spot even though I'm at one stop uh, underexposed in the sky uh, it's one of the reasons why I've invested in a, a series of grey grads to try and help me control these sorts of situations but as you can see there I've put the grad uh, across the sky and I've still got a hot spot. Dialing the exposure back, uh, that's three quarters of a stop. You can still see some little red, some little red blobs uh, indicating uh, overexposure. Now my only option here is to start to bracket. So you know, crank the exposure uh, right back in order to uh, contain the highlight detail, and then uh, bring the exposure up. So you can see here, uh, one of my two stops. So that's just taking the start of the HDR sequence and two stops, and then I'm um, two thirds of a stop, uh, just basically bracketing uh, each image, and then I'm putting the finger over to stop the, uh, or mark the end of the HDR sequence. Um, but a bit like the gray grad situation, if I'm in a, a position where things are changing fast, you know, I, I don't wanna have to think about doing uh, bracketing it's just for me anyway it's a right royal pain in the bum now 
I know that I have bracketing as an option. Uh, I, I know it's there. I don't, uh, I don't like doing it. Uh, I do a little bit of IT uh, for a living uh, to you know, help pay the bills. So having to do stuff in software, I, I have to say, uh, it's not, not, the, not my favorite option. I'd far prefer uh, to get it as right as I possibly can uh, in camera. That for me is uh, far more satisfying. Um, I think I say in one of my talks actually that you know if I was to label myself as a photographer then I'd actually want to improve as a photographer not necessarily become a super whiz expert in uh, digital software. Digital software is part of the process I know it I get it um, but uh, you know, if I can possibly avoid it uh, then I will. My photo buddy who you saw uh, at the beginning of this little sequence uh, in fact he's here now uh, he has a uh, Canon 5D Mark IV and very often he can capture everything in one frame which I am insanely jealous of. So in conclusion uh, none of these things uh, take away my enjoyment of the Olympus system. Uh, these are just three things that every once in a while um, just uh, creep into my head and make me question, I suppose, uh, the choice that I've made and make me question whether there is maybe uh, a, a better, more efficient uh, solution out there as technology develops and as new functions and features are, are discovered in, and included on the latest camera systems. Um, I would also make the point that uh, things like using filters uh, and bracketing, uh, those things aren't new, uh, they're you know, proven uh, photographic techniques. Uh, like I said, with the uh, filter system, I found a way of working around it. And then with regard to dynamic range, uh, bracketing isn't new. Um, I think the point I would make is that <clears throat> they, both of those things uh, they, they, they trip me up. Um, I've been in situations where I've tried to use those two solutions and it's not quite worked, uh, which, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't say I've been in those positions where it's you know, once in a lifetime, but it, I think it always bothers me and blunts my confidence a little bit that one day I'm going to be in one of those once in a lifetime situations and one of those two things is going to, you know, uh, 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 grab me by the throat uh, and I'm going to panic uh, and I'm going to make a hash and really, really mess up uh, the situation uh, that I'm in. Which is why sometimes I do look with significant jealousy at uh, my uh, photo chum uh, who can just, you know, almost let the camera do the work on automatic and still come away uh, with a decent picture. But uh, there we go. I hope this has been useful. I hope this has uh, made uh, some of you uh, think. I hope it hasn't put anybody off uh, choosing a Micro Four Thirds uh, system. And hopefully uh, the uh, methods and solutions that I found to work around, certainly the last two, uh, are proven to be helpful and useful uh, to some of you out there. So it just remains for me to uh, thank you ever so much uh, for watching. Uh, my next video uh, will also be about the Olympus system, uh, specifically uh, what uh, in-camera uh, function I find the most useful uh, in the system. Uh, but until that one gets released, uh, please stay well, please stay safe, and I shall see you again soon. Take care now.